What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here for the Sunday video. Before we dive into today's video, I have an important question for you all. In the comments down below, who is winning today's football games? Chiefs, Bengals, Rams, Niners. My prediction, Chiefs, Rams. Chalk, I know, but what are you going to do? What is your guess in the comments down below? Let's start with some new stuff first. The biggest thing that happened this week, in my opinion, is probably the Star Stock stuff that just kind of came out late Friday night. Uh, I did a video Saturday morning yesterday about it. Since then, friend of the channel, Dakota Sports Cards Anonymous, did a video Saturday afternoon slash early evening where he potentially got inside information from one of the employees that let go. I would highly encourage you to go watch SCA's video on this, make your own conclusions. But all I will say is, is after I watched his video, I feel fairly strongly about the choice that I made to remove all my stuff off the platform on Friday. Uh, on Friday, when the news initially broke, I only had two slabs remaining. Actually, I had three slabs remaining. I just accepted a cheap offer on one. Uh, I had two Baker Mayfield, a PSA 10, and a PSA 9 left on there. Base cards, nothing crazy. And about 150 bucks in cash. Uh, I put in requests Friday afternoon for that. Based off of what I've seen in the SCI Discord and some other Discords that I'm in, it seems like it's been a straight fire sale all, all weekend with people just literally accepting every offer that's out there, just trying to liquidate their collection uh, and turn it into cash that maybe cash will be easier to get out there. The gist of Dakota's video, once again, I highly encourage you to go watch it and form your own opinion on it, is, is they essentially let everybody go. There's really not a lot of people left working at Starstock. And he had some very interesting information in regarding to like, in regarding to like, how many cards they can actually process to ship home versus how many that they have. And now that they've fired everybody, how is that going to look? So the whole star stock situation seems messy at best. According to an email they put out Saturday morning, star stock put out an email. It sounds like they are shifting their focus to slabs, wax, and new digital assets, which basically it sounds like they're getting in the NFTs. There's been multiple rumors of that all weekend. Slabs, much easier overhead management, inventory-wise, stuff like that. Same with Wax. They don't have any card graders anymore. So the whole, there's rumors, like in their statement, they talk about, you know, raw carding, grading, we will see about it returning in a few months from now. It's never coming back. There's no way. Dakota says it in his video. Uh, and I was already assuming that based off of the information that I saw. So to me, the Star Stock thing is probably one of the biggest things this week. Uh, as we continue to each week, the hobby continues to give us new drama slash business things. And this is going to be the first of, I don't want to say many, but we are going to continue to see some of these places that popped up during the boom, not make it. The rubber is now meeting the road. The easy money is gone, both for us as sports cards, flippers, investors, collectors, whatever you want to call us. And also for these companies that were kind of printing money early on. And it sounds like Starstock really wasn't even printing money early on. They're not going to be the first or they're not going to be the last rather. They're not going to be the last company. I am waiting for some of the smaller grading companies to start, uh, you know, closing up shop. We'll see what happens. We will see where this goes from here. So uh, just in regard, just a general comment, uh, this is completely unrelated to this, but I had a local show on Saturday. My local Canton show was on Saturday morning. I went out. I was there for about almost three hours. I was there for a while. And it was packed. I mean, packed. It was, and this is like a 50 table show, maybe. I forget. It was absolutely slammed. It was one of the busiest shows I have seen in a while. Uh, it was really busy. And I was at a show, a local show the weekend before, and it was really busy. But this one yesterday, because the one I went to last week is one I don't go to all the time. The one that I was at yesterday is one that I regularly attend. So I'm very used to like what the attendance looks like. And I go the same time. I'm always there first thing in the morning and I'm usually out of there by lunch. And 
it was way busier than normal. And the weather was not nice yesterday. It was freezing cold. And that place was popping. Uh, I did make a couple pickups. I'll talk about those in a video sometime later down the line. But that show was busy, like really busy. All the vendors were saying it was really busy. The parking lot was slammed. So, I, you know, curious, what are you guys and girls seeing out there on the uh, on the old show front? If, if you're going to local shows, does it look like traffic's picking up? Like interest remains extremely strong in the sports card world. You know, just because charts and graphs aren't going up and down and prices aren't swinging all wild and crazy, there's still a lot of people in cards right now. That is 100% for sure. So that pretty much covers the news and just the random stuff off the top. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into some charts and graphs today. Talking a little football, a little basketball, and a very little baseball. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go ahead and dive in. First up, just prior to recording, the Tom Brady news came out. I shouldn't say just, just prior. A few hours ago, the Tom Brady news came out. Uh, that he is retiring. So his stats, records are locked into place now. So what he has is not going to be changing. No more Super Bowls are getting added to that total. Maybe an MVP. We don't really know yet. Uh, there's a chance there. Uh, and his stuff was getting posted like crazy. There may actually... I'll be curious to see if there's an interesting buying opportunity over the next couple of days because... His inventory is flooding the market on him all day on Twitter, IG, eBay posts, just stuff is getting slung around left and right. So I was curious, this is a very non-scientific way, just curious to see what his prices were doing. His PSA 9 last sale was 124 for 6K. These are the PSA 9s. Look at how many just sold today. This one for 6,500, this one best offer accepted. Uh, another one, another one. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, six have sold just this afternoon. And prior to that, the last one sold for sixty three hundred, and one for fifty eight hundred, and one for fifty eight hundred on the twenty fifth. So just in the last couple hours, I'm recording this Saturday evening. Uh, a bunch have sold today. Looks like this one's moving up a little bit. The PSA ten is actually flat. To potentially down slightly. Uh, once again, last one sold for twenty one seventy, or yeah, twenty one seven hundred on the twenty third, and then this one got smacked. Oh, that's a PSA nine. I'm sorry. Uh, this one sold for four full best offer at nineteen ninety nine, so twenty k basically on that one. Actually, down slightly from the last sale prior to that. But the PSA nine seems to be moving up a little bit. Probably more buyers available at that price range. So Brady stuff. You know, whether it goes up or down, I don't know, but it is liquid right now, and it is getting thrown all over the interwebs to try to move it. Patrick Mahomes, PSA 10 Silver Prism. We mentioned this one in the football video that I did the other day, the football market video, and I posted about this on Twitter and on uh, the community post on YouTube. The only real sales that happened in between last week and this week were these couple at 8,200, and they both look suspect. Very suspect. There was two Probstein sales. They both looked a little, little, some zero bidders went in those ones uh, and running them up. Well, another one sold and it went for 7K. So he is actually down uh, a decent amount of money from his prior two sales. We will see what happens if they win this weekend, if they win on Sunday. Does it get another little bump as they make their way to the Super Bowl? Or is that not enough with Mahomes? Do we have to have the Super Bowl win to see him sustain prices and even go up in that case? Or will what typically happens happens? If he wins, will his prices dip because inventory gets flooded to the market? We shall find out later today. Moving right along in the football world, Joe Burrow. Most of Joe Burrow stuff has actually been fairly flat this week. Like if you're just talking about like optic hollows, silvers, that sort of stuff, it's not really going crazy. It's selling, but it's just not, you're not seeing a big run up in prices. I just think a lot of people are anticipating them losing on Sunday, good, bad, or indifferent. If they win, I think his stuff would explode. Uh, if they lose, I think it's going to come down to, we talked about this in the football video earlier this week. I think it's going to come down to how they lose. 
Does he lose a shootout and look really good doing it? Do they lose a blowout and he looks terrible? Could kind of set how the, the, the market's expectations for him going into the offseason because it's the last thing that you saw. So I'm very curious to see how that plays out. To me, the Chiefs-Rams game has massive hobby impact, whether it's Burrow winning, losing, losing ugly, losing amazingly, Mahomes moving on and potentially you know winning another Super Bowl, Mahomes getting eliminated, and Burrow moving on. Regardless, there's a lot of money value-wise that is going to swing on that Chiefs-Bengals game. I don't think that's the case with the Rams 49ers. No offense. Probably not a ton of people with vested interest in Jimmy G. I'm sure there's some out there. And same with Stafford. Now, Stafford's an interesting play if they could actually win the Super Bowl. And he has one that kind of legitimize himself. You know, I don't know that he'd see a big boost based off that. But it's kind of an angle to think about for there. But Burrow, the one card that really had a nice come up. And it's funny. We talked about this one on the channel a couple weeks ago. His Optic Auto uh, out of 150, PSA 10. Uh, had a real nice jump this week. It went from 1,500 to 3,500. This is a pop 10 on this. I've talked about this card a bunch on the channel, not with just Burrow, just in general, this particular card, the base optic rookie out of 150, I absolutely adore. It is one of the cleanest cards for whatever player it is that you collect almost regardless of year. Um, I just really like this card. The autos always look really nice on it. I don't know what it is about it, but I'm always a sucker for this card. So that one had a really nice run up this week. And like I said, there's only 10 of these. So it's not like um, these are just laying around to, to just go grab one. So let's switch over to basketball. Wanted to do a little check-in. We haven't checked in on the old Zion Jaw Silver War uh, to kind of see what's going on there. And they're basically in a dead heat with each other. Jaw's the pink line, Zion's the blue line. And you can just see them intertracing with each other, just flip-flopping back and forth. Uh, Joss seems to have maybe taken a slight lead here. We haven't gotten Zion news lately. I feel like we are due for a Zion update any day now. And it'll be interesting to see how the market reflects whatever that news is. I am still waiting for him to just be declared out for the season. Maybe they keep dragging that out. I don't know. But I just, I cannot see the Pelicans bringing him back this year. We are already into February basically now. And what sense does that make? to potentially bring him back uh, on a team that is terrible. We'll see. Uh, last known, he is somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, maybe rehabbing. We don't really know. Uh, it's a weird situation there. Ja continues to play great, basically maintaining his prices as a starter in the NBA All-Star game. The Grizzlies look absolutely fantastic. Um, there's, he's getting some really long shot MVP buzz. I don't expect him to win it, but the chatter's out there. One of the best players uh, and funnest players to watch this NBA season so far has been Ja. LaMelo. LaMelo and the Hornets. His stuff dipped a little bit for a while. They've been starting to play really good again, and his stuff is picking up again. And they are, I think they're poised to make a run to get into the top six in the East, at least temporarily, with some of the injuries going around the Eastern Conference. You know, the Bulls are probably going to slide backwards without... Um, Caruso and Ball, I believe they're getting Levine back now, but that team's been a little busted up lately. And then you have the Nets, who are kind of a mess all of a sudden, with Durant being out and Kyrie not being able to play home games and not being able to play in Canada. So it's basically the Harden show, and that's not always the greatest him by himself. Uh, Joe Harris is still out. So they could potentially slide backwards. The East is super tight. You look at the NBA standings, it is wild times. But don't sleep on my Cleveland Cavaliers, baby. I may have picked up some Cavs stuff on Saturday at the show like I am prone to do. So, well, once again, that'll be on a, on a video later. I already have one mail day slash uh, show pickup video recorded. That is probably going up tomorrow. But uh, well, this will be another one later in the week because I've actually gotten some other stuff in the mail since recording this one. So, uh, But yeah, LaMelo on the rise up. His This is a silver PSA 10 prism. Went from 2,900 to 36.50, a 25% jump. Very low pop on these, only 71, and this has nothing to do with the PSA backlog. They're, these are extremely tough grades. These are one of those unicorn tough grade cards because of whatever Panini did during production of them. Another one that had a really nice run up this week, the Joker. His silver PSA 10 prism went from 2,500 to 3,200, a 30% increase. The Nuggets have their issues with injuries and whatnot. I, you would think they'd be getting Jamal Murray back at some point in time here. 
The Joker is having an absolutely amazing season. He is looking fantastic. He's putting up monster numbers and has been a joy to watch. Uh, and his prices are getting a little bit of a bump. I don't know if it's based off that or just in general. And once again, he is an older Prism class, draft class. He's from 2015. The PSA 10 pop count on this is 125. It's 128, I'm sorry. Not a lot of these out there. And it's not like there's a lot of these sitting out there to be graded or anything like that. So that population report, probably not changing a ton uh, over the coming years. And there's definitely not sitting in the PSA backlog, that's for sure. So the Joker stuff, getting a little bit of a buzz. Even his base prism, uh, I have to imagine, is fairly low pop at this time. But his silver definitely got a little bit of a bounce here. Couple guys going down. Kobe tops Chrome base. Uh, you know the legendary green card. This one's slipping a little bit, down thirteen percent from ninety eight hundred to eighty five hundred. Pop eight hundred on this bad boy. And then another one that's going down. Steph Curry. This is just his top space paper. Nothing crazy. PSA ten down from eleven point six k to nine point one k. A twenty percent hit. Now Curry's having an outstanding season, but he has really slowed down in recent weeks. Um, and is not, he's still playing, still playing good, but not like he was the first part of the season where he's lighting the world on fire. I don't know if age has caught up with him or just kind of slowing down or we're just kind of like in the middle of the season and, you know, the doldrums have kind of set in and people are just going through the motions for a little bit in the run up to the playoffs. The Warriors are still a really good team. I'm a little concerned about the Draymond Green injury, uh, and that, that might be a little bit more longer term than they are letting on. And that might not be great for them as a team, like in terms of a deep playoff run. But we'll see what happens. But Curry stuff definitely is cooling off quite a bit the last couple weeks. Switching over to baseball really quick. Generally speaking, the baseball market is really just not doing much. Uh, I, there's a couple things that are ever so slightly up. There's a couple things that are ever so slightly down. But it is the stagnant of the stagnant. Really didn't get the best news with the negotiations this week or the worst. News. It was just kind of like, yeah, we, you know, whatever. Labor negotiations are a mess in general. I don't know what happens there. Are we trending towards losing games? MLB says, yeah, we'll lose games. But they, I feel like they always say that. So we will see what happens there. It would be nice if this was not hanging over everything. At some point in time, it is going to have a negative impact, I think. And maybe there's a buying opportunity for stuff. So what I dug into really quick, because I was just kind of curious. So this is just like a little more of a long-term look than we typically do here on the weekend review videos. Usually I look at seven days, maybe 14 days in some cases worth of data. Uh, just a quick little first Bowman up market update. Uh, I looked at Soto and Tatis. This is their first Bowman Chrome autos. I went back to the beginning of the playoffs since, um, you know, not much has really changed for them. Soto was obviously hot to end a season. So I was just kind of curious to see, like, if you bought these guys right at the end of the season, how has the offseason treated you? Uh, long story short, pretty well. Uh, the Bowman Chrome to Tease PSA 10 is only up about 10%. The BGS 9.5 is up 22%. Could be some subgrade variants there. Soto is the one that's doing pretty good. PSA 10 is up 16%. PSA 9 is up 25%. And the BGS 9.5 is up 40%. So his stuff continues to move and be fairly liquid. He's a very hot player. Um, he, pretty much across the board in all his stuff. His market has not cooled or dipped at all. Um, I am contemplating moving one of my Soto pinks. I actually threw it up on my slabs. Uh, and I also threw it up on eBay. Kind of a high number just to kind of see what happens. Uh, the my slabs one is a little, little above comps. But it was more just to kind of throw it out there and see what offers come in on it. I'm not desperate to move one. But I am considering moving one just to kind of free up some capital to make other plays since I have two of them. Once again, I have two of them, so kind of gives me a little bit of leeway there, but I'm still a believer in Soto. I would still very much like to own a first Bowman, but they keep going up, and that makes it tricky. Uh, let's dig into some prospects really quick. Bobby Witt and Wander Franco. I was just kind of curious, same thing, how have their prices been doing since the offseason started? Uh, once again, I went back to you know, early October on these. Bobby Witt, PSA 10, up 42% over the offseason. BGS 9.5, up 18%. Wander Franco, PSA 10, has stayed flat. 3% change, and a BGS 9.5 is up 20%. So not a ton of movement there either way, 
But Witt is probably the next the guy to be the big call up if there is a spring training. If he would be a guy that if he does anything at all in spring training, we get a massive boost. He's the Wander Franco of last year. He's going to be the guy everyone has their eyes on. He's going to be the guy that probably gets sent down in the beginning of the season. And he's the guy that will get called up late in the summer, assuming the season goes off without a hitch uh, and maybe gets a bump there. If he did anything in the preseason or in the spring training, if they have a spring training, I would potentially look that look at that as an opportunity to move off of his stuff. Don't forget the Wander Franco, Wander Franco call up. His prices were actually higher in spring training. He had a couple good spring training games. He had a couple home runs and his stuff went nuts in March. And then it cooled down again. And then he got called up, hit a home run in his first game and still didn't get as high as what it was back in March. So just kind of keep that in mind. So quick little baseball chat there for you, boys and girls. Once again, market's really not doing too, too much. That's pretty much all I have for you guys and girls today. So smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Little tease for upcoming videos this week. I have a mail day slash card show pickup video that will probably come out tomorrow. I also have a PSA submission preview video that will come out probably later in the week, maybe Thursday or Friday. And beyond that, I do not know. Uh, I could almost make a second mail day video. I have been buying like crazy. Uh, you will see tomorrow. Tomorrow is one of the biggest mail day videos I've ever had. Not necessarily in dollar value, but just number of things. Uh, I've been buying a lot. So those are the two videos that I already know are coming. Beyond that, unsure yet. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't. I guess click notification bells, supposedly. Uh, and we'll catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.